good evening children <clears throat> today we shall discuss about the preamble to the constitution now the preamble to the constitution is a brief introductory statement or in other words it can be referred as the preface which highlights the entire constitution the principles the guidelines or the objective of the entire constitution can be known by the preamble and the pre, uh, and this preamble was basically introduced by pandit jawaharlal nehru and it was adopted on 26 november 1949 by the constituent assembly now the preamble is actually it's like a mirror that explains the basic principle the objectives and the purpose now according to the preamble if you can, if you see in page number 182 it's written we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizen justice sorry justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of states and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation so that's what the preamble says about now if you say we the people of india that means not the people from outside india that means people indian people have framed the constitution and it is for the welfare of the people secondly the word sovereign is given there state now sovereign state means that it is completely free of any external power and that india is being ruled by indians and indians are no longer slave of any other external power and that people of india have their own right to take any kind of internal or external decision without any fear then the word socialist and secular that is in the preamble which were later on inserted by the 42nd constitution amendment act in the year 1976 now socialist means that wealth the entire wealth or resources of india should not be generated in limited hands that will it will not go only to a limited hands but it will be equally distributed or shared by the entire indians and the government should regulate the law on it then the word secular that means everyone in india that is indian has the right of freedom to worship his or her his or her own religion or in fact propagate his or her own religion and that everyone's religion will be treated equally in india that what secular means and as you can see after secular the word democratic now democratic means the state that will be run by representative which will be elected by the people it's not kind of hierarchy or monarchy type of government it's people will elect their own leaders that is meant what democratic state means the next is republic that means that the head of the state is elected and not a hierarchy person of course the president of india is indirectly elected by the elected representative for a term of 5 years then 
the remaining word main keywords in the preamble justice liberty equality and fraternity now these words are to ensure the citizen rights the preamble includes four basic principles these are the four basic principles because if these words are absent then there will a lot of problem would arise now let's see now justice now justice ensure four kinds of justice sorry three kinds of justice social justice political justice and economic justice now what do you mean by social justice now social justice means that every indian citizen has the right or should enjoy equal right to lead a dignified life or respectful life as an indian citizen then political justice every indian has a right to enjoy equal political rights that is irrespective of any or of what caste or religion or language or community he belongs it doesn't matter if every indian has a right to vote or also to take part in the election process that is political justice then economic justice now this justice re uh, refers to the removal of economic inequality now if you look around in the present scenario the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer so in the present scenario economic justice is hardly seen in the society but even though this actually refers that equal wage for men and women economic support to physically challenge an old person and equal distribution of state wealth and resource but that's not happening at present then the next is liberty now liberty actually means freedom freedom of a person has the freedom to express his opinion his view the freedom to follow his or her own religion the freedom to propagate his religion that's what liberty means equality equal opportunity to to be provided to every indian citizen irrespective of what religion he follows what caste he belongs to and that everyone is equal in front of the law that is in front of court it doesn't matter whether the person is rich or poor if someone has done something wrong he or she will be punished because in front of the court everyone is equal and lastly fraternity that is brotherhood so this is considered as one of the most basic principle so everyone should respect each other's religion language and culture so that brotherhood can be established and and that national integration uh, in a uh, yeah national integration can be developed and that can be possible only because of fraternity the brotherhood if there is brotherhood among people of different faith so this is what the preamble speaks about so just by the preamble we can know that what actually the entire constitution speaks about what is the goal or what is the objective of the constitution, uh, constitution is so this is what the preamble is just like if you see any book when you read when you open the book the first thing you see is the preface and the entire content or what content is there in the book is you can have a small idea but just by reading the preface so likewise by reading the preamble you can at least have an idea or the highlight of what exactly is inside the entire book now next we'll discuss about the characteristics now we'll not discuss the entire 10 
characteristics we'll go only with the main one so we have learned about the historical background about the preamble now we learn about the indian constitution has also its own salient feature its few characteristics now what are they now the first is that our indian constitution is one of the lengthiest or the longest written constitution because it contains everything in the written form from directive principles to administrative policies fundamental rights judiciary system election process or procedure everything is written in written form and it has about 448 articles 25 parts and 12 schedules and that's why it is the lengthiest constitution in the world then another important characteristics is the preamble that we have just discussed the next is the mixed constitution now why indian constitution is known as a mixed constitution now constitution uh, some constitution are rigid and some are flexible now flexible means which can be amended easily that is now amendment is actually a process or a procedure when we make some changes in the constitution that is called as amendment so likewise in a flexible constitution amendment can be or things can be made to have changes can be made quite easily but in a rigid constitution changes cannot be made very easily and our indian constitution has the feature of both mixed sorry has both of flexible and as well as rigid and that's why it is known as mixed constitution for example uh formation of a new state then demarcation of the state boundary so these things can be easily amended so it's flexible in nature but things like presidential election process distribution of power in the state and uh, state and center these things cannot be changed easily so it is rigid and that's why it is known as mixed constitution then another important characteristic is that of our sorry of our constitution is sovereign state which i have told you secular state social state yeah single citizenship this is also one of the important characteristics now indian constitution does not provide dual citizenship like that of usa it provides single citizenship to its citizen then another important characteristic is parliamentary government if you remember parliamentary democracy the thing that we have borrowed from england so parliamentary government means that according to this government the president is the head of the country but the real power lies in the hands of the prime minister so the president is just a nominal head but the main power lies in the hands of the prime minister and his council of ministers and all of them are collectively responsible to the lok sabha and the last is the division of power this is one another important characteristic of the indian constitution that is the indian constitution has divided the power in the union state sorry in in the hands of the like in the union list the state list and the concurrent list so the union list means those power that are in the hands of the unions like say for example currency or external foreign affairs and all these things will be looked after by the union or the center then we have in the state list suppose say law and order or agriculture or forest these falls in the state list the state will look after this and there are some which both the center and as well as the state will look after for example the education that present the so the edu education falls in the concurrent list so this is 
Uh, so these are few characteristics of our Indian constitution. The next is another important characteristic is fundamental rights and duties. So the Indian constitution has given us six fundamental rights and eleven fundamental duties which we shall discuss in the next chapter. We have a separate chapter for fundamental rights and fundamental duties. And the last one, directive principles of state policy. Now actually directive principles of state policy means it's actually it's a guideline that the state has to follow while implementing any kind of policy. And and this directive principle of state policy has been borrowed from Ireland and certain principles were laid down in the directive principles of state policy so that the government can make a welfare state so the basic principles are to increase the standard of living of the people to develop the rural areas to settle dispute peacefully to spread brotherhood among the the citizens of India to remove illiteracy to provide free and compulsory education to all the children so these are few basic principles now unlike fundamental rights the government cannot be forced to implement these principles and they are not enforceable by law that means when now we have six fundamental rights for example right to equality cultural and educational right right to freedom of religion so we have these rights now if we feel that our these rights are not been protected then when we can approach the court and the court will direct the state to protect our fundamental rights but when it comes to directive principles for example when any political party when they want to come in power before election they release a manifesto right that if you voted for us we'll do this we'll do that like we'll make bridge we'll give you employment we'll make roads we'll give you 24 into 7 electricity right they make all sort of promises and then they release that booklet which we call as election manifesto and once they are in power if they do not fulfill what they have uh, whatever they have promised can we the voter can we do something no we cannot go and tell the court that yes this political party before coming to power they promised us this and now they are not doing that so please tell them so the court cannot tell them or cannot enforce them to the, to the government that you have to do this no they are not enforceable like the fu fundamental rights so this is what all about this chapter question answers I shall give you later on but here short answers you have to do it by yourself number one fill in the blanks number two you have to do it by yourself question number three I will do right answers four do it by yourself in the book itself and the rest six seven eight nine whatever necessary i will let you know and i will do it for you that's all thank you